Hey everyone, Ian from Eurogamer here. Now, one of the very first video game conspiracy theories to appear on the internet surrounds the relationship of two seemingly unconnected Pokemon, Cubone and Kangas Khan. If you played Pokemon back in the day, you're sure to have heard about it though. The theory spread like wildfire, mainly thanks to its rather sinister undertones. Just in case you're not up to speed though, here's a quick rundown. The theory goes that Cubone, a strange Pokemon that wears a skull on its head and wields a bone as a weapon, is actually the offspring of another Pokemon, the kangaroo-inspired Kangas Khan. You see, much like a kangaroo, female Kangas Khans carry around their young in a pouch, but according to this theory, if the Kangas Khan was to die, its defenseless offspring would be left with no choice but to use the skull and a bone from its parent's corpse as protection, thus creating a Cubone. It's thought that originally Cubone's evolved form Marowak would then be able to evolve back into a Kangas Khan, bringing the whole sad story full circle. Now, there are plenty of threads that tie this theory together. For a start, Cubone bears more than a passing resemblance to a baby Kangas Khan. The skull it wears looks just like the shape of a Kangas Khan's head. And of course, Cubone's signature special move Bone Meringue has an obvious Australian theme. However, because Pokemon Red and Blue were technically kids' games, people have theorised that an orphaned baby Kangaskhan wearing its mother's skull on its head might have been a little bit too dark for a family-friendly Nintendo game, and so this relationship was quickly removed by the developers at the 11th hour. Because of this, Kangaskhan became its own standalone Pokemon, and a new, non-evolving Marowak was written and used to replace the old one. This part of the theory is backed up by the existence of the glitch Pokemon M, which many believe to be the remains of the scrapped Marowak. In fact, if you catch M and then level it up, it will eventually evolve into a Kangaskhan. This is such a popular theory, many Pokemon trainers now take it as fact, even though the game's creators have never officially acknowledged this creepy connection. That is, until now. Anyone who has played the recently released Pokemon's Sun and Moon will be familiar with the new Call for Help mechanic, which allows wild Pokemon to call in reinforcements when they reach low HP. It's rather divisive amongst the community because not only does it draw out one-on-one -on -one battles and make them a lot tougher, it also makes catching Pokemon harder as it's impossible to catch a Pokemon when there are two on the field rather than just one. So the interesting thing here is that the majority of these calls for help from wild Pokemon are answered by a Pokemon from the same species or evolutionary family. So for instance, a Rattata could call either another Rattata or a Raticate. Makes sense, right? Well, guess whom a Cubone calls when it gets into trouble? That's right, either another Cubone or a Kangaskhan. And you can see it happening right here in this gameplay snippet. I don't know about you, but this highly suggests to me that there is in fact a relationship between these two Pokemon after all. At the very least, it's a cheeky nod to the fans from the developers who are referencing the theory, but either way, this is the first time the games have included such a significant reference to the relationship. Of course, as with all good conspiracy theories, there are a few ways that this one could be discounted. For instance, there are some cases in Sun and Moon of other Pokemon calling in Pokebuddies from a different species for help, but crucially, these cases are few and far between, and they mostly require specific circumstances. Sometimes it could be because of a certain weather condition, or other times it's because of an interesting snippet of lore, like in the case of Marini here. Marini is a new Pokemon that's said to prey on an older Pokemon called Corsola. Now, what's interesting about Marini is that it only appears when Corsola calls for help, and then, instead of helping it, it'll actually attack its ally Corsola instead of you. What an a-hole. So, as you can see, while there are a couple of reasons why this might not be definitive proof of the Cubone Kangas Khan theory, in my opinion, I think this is pretty strong evidence of a direct relationship between the two. But what about you lot? Has this video finally proven the theory, or are you yet to be convinced? As always, let us know in the comments below, and perhaps together we can crack this mystery once and for all. 
thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And if you like game theories like this one, why not check out my video about how all the Far Cry games are connected. And before you go typing in the comments, Far Cry Primal and Far Cry Blood Dragon do not count. They're spin-offs. See ya.